All righty. So this looks very interesting what we've got in front of us here, Hendo. Can you run us through what's going on here and what we're about to do? Yeah. So what we've got here is we've got... Hey, no cheating. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so what we've got here is we've got uh, Revel uh, New World Lager. So they're all the beers are identical. They all came from the same tap just mm-hmm. now. Uh, but what I've done is the one that's on the left that you have the most of, that's our control beer. So that beer hasn't been doctored or spiked or anything like that. And the other three um, have been uh, ha- have had a flavour standard, they're called, um, put into it. So... The idea is, is we're going to, I'm going to guide you through some comparisons on the different beers and we're going to talk about what we're smelling and tasting and we'll see if we can identify it. So what I want you to do, right, so the rules are really simple, is, uh, Matty, you you know sensory, so what I don't want you to do is just call out the name of the flavour because this is really for the benefit of Matt and Duncan. Right, so also for my benefit. Really. Mostly for, mostly <laughs> I'm, for I'm the rookie here, <laughs> and um, uh, and so what we'll do is we'll just we'll just talk through what we're sort of smelling and tasting. Right? Everyone's at a different part of their yeah, journey, mate. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. the other really <laughs> here, and you guys are here, here, and here. That's right. Well, the other really important thing is is that um, your sense of smell and taste is as unique as your fingerprint. Yeah. Okay, and there are different flavour characteristics that you may be very perceptive to, and there might be others that you're completely blind to. Right, and that's okay. So in this session, there are no wrong answers unless Duncan says it out. Yep, and it's um, <laughs> and that's uh, a bad got, one. right. So let's start <laughs> off with straight up Revel New World Lager. Right. So okay. have a smell, have a taste, and that's basically your gold standard. All right. All right. Happy with that? Yep. It's not a bad beer. I'd have yeah. a few of those. Pretty rock solid. So now what I want you to do is take the second from the left glass and I want you to have a smell and a taste of it, right? Mm-hmm. And it's okay to compare back to the control sample as well. Now, I'm going to ask you this question. Are they the same? No, definitely not the All same. Right. What do you think might be different about it? I feel like it's a bit flat. Flat, yeah. That's probably the best way I can describe it. Yeah. Duncan, what do you think, mate? It smells <coughs> quite a deal different. Quite a deal different? Yeah. Make sure you keep me in order as well, mate. Yeah, because they're a bit mouldy. That way, that, that, that's your control. We're doing the le- second from the left. Ah. I drank the wrong one. Okay, then. <laughs> <laughs> no answer's wrong. All right, I think no answer's wrong. I said it unless, unless Duncan's in it, right? So that's okay. So, Matty, are they the same? No, definitely not the same. Okay. If you were to um, call out a um, uh, something that would be different about it, what would? how would you describe it? In terms of flavour, I feel that's a bit more bitter. Yep. Um, the aroma, I think it's dulled the aroma. Yep. Um, in terms of what stands out. To me, it's not really an obvious fault. No, no, it's pretty subtle, this one. Yeah. Yep. So I think whatever it is has dulled the aroma from the base beer and it tastes a little bit more bitter. Yep. That's probably what I'm getting. Yep. Yep. Okay. Everything's just turned down, I think. It's, you know, nothing... Was, there's not as much flavour. I don't know. They're pretty basic yeah. things to say, but yeah, yeah it's yeah, just no, like no, everything's okay. been turned. Yeah. The dial's been turned down on it. Yep. If I was to say, Matty, uh, green apples, do you get green apples out of that? May, oh, a hint. A hint. Yeah, yeah. Now you've said it. I know what it yeah. is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so basically, uh, this uh, that second glass from the second from the, the left has been. Uh, doctored up with uh, a chemical compound called acetaldehyde, okay? Probably could have used a little bit more, mm. I think. It was quite subtle for for, for, um, for Maddie and I. Uh, so acetaldehyde is uh, a chemical compound that's naturally produced during fermentation uh, and it smells and tastes like green apples, okay? And all yeast make acetaldehyde. It's just part of that natural metabolic pathway. But if the yeast health isn't great and the acetaldehyde... It, isn't cleaned up by the yeast, 
then it will stay in the product and it's basically a sign of an incomplete fermentation. Or, it's very or, common or, in home brew, I find. Very common. That's that's actually my house flavour when I home brew <laughs> is <laughs> acetaldehyde. So uh, that one's quite subtle. This is really interesting because I've just got my new prototype Rockstar Brewer uh, flavour standards there. And so what, what I'm, there are different thresholds for different chemical compounds. So that one's had about 150 micro microliters in it um but I'll, I'll i'll tell you about the other ones when we get to them so that's that one's a seed aldehyde right mm -hmm. now go back to your control beer have a smell have a taste again and then i want you to go to the third one that's the second one from the right duncan got it have a smell and have a taste Oof. So what do you think? Is that one, does that one smell and taste the same as the control beer? No. Okay, so if you were going to describe what the difference would be, um, like I said, there's no wrong answers. Mm -hmm. Just write some descriptors. This is the thing I was talking about before, right? So we eat and drink every day and we smell and taste every day, but we, don't, we just put things down our gullet and we don't even really think about it or talk about it. It's almost like that chalky flavour if you ha have a Panadol and it like dissolves on your tongue. Yeah. That's probably the... Um, like an aspirin or something? Yeah, or, yeah. yeah. Duncan, what I, do you I think? Just, just something I'm quite right about that. I don't know, I can't put <laughs> my finger on it. But yeah, uh, yeah it smells <coughs> completely different. That's yeah. the first one. I it's pretty, pretty pungent, isn't it? Yeah. Matty? It's very cardboardy. Very cardboardy. Cardboardy. Yeah. yeah. This particular chemical compound, it's like, it's, a lot of people say it's like cardboard, papery. Uh, some people say it smells and tastes like stink bugs. Or yeah, mm. that's actually exactly <laughs> yeah, what I got. Or ants when you crush yeah, those no, ants. Yeah, no, I got no. I couldn't put my right. finger on it, but that's what it yeah. smells like. Okay, yeah. so uh, that particular chemical compound is called trans 2 nonanol, right? And so that that happens. That's basically uh, a sign of age in a beer. Oh. Mm. So uh, it can it, you can actually there's a few commercial examples of beer that mostly lager styles that actually have that after about six months. And it's related to the brew day process, so your work production process. And there's a phenomenon called hot side aeration. So if you aerate your work while it's hot, that will happen six months later. And so brewers try to minimise that, uh, you know, oxidation of work while it's hot. Yeah. Which, But the weird thing is, is once it's cold, then we actually need to oxidise it <laughs> for, um, for yeast health. All right, but it's just weird like that. Yeah. So trans is a very, very potent co compound. How much do you think I put in a litre of beer? What would you say? 150 microliters in the first one. So yep. I reckon maybe 50 microliters? Put 15. 15, yeah. 15 microliters in, in so, uh, one so litre of beer. 10 times yeah. less than 10 the first times one. less than and the yeah, first one. It stands out a lot more. And so what that is, is that's basically um, the, what we call threshold, right? And even then, I was if when you're a kid and you'd um, chew spitballs. Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, you're like made at the front of the class. Ball, that's yeah. what it smells so, and tastes like. This is the really thing, the really interesting thing. Trans two nonals are real. It's 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 not potent, but our uh, perception to it, it, our threshold is significantly lower than the acetaldehyde, for instance, right? And so I actually reckon I could have gone a tenth of that again. And we still would have picked yeah, it up. Yeah, that was quite strong. I right? picked that so, one. Yeah, as soon as I got a whiff of that, I was. Like, oh. Yeah, yeah. I actually did did a session like this at a at a, another brewery um, a few weeks ago, and actually put two hundred microliters in a liter. And oh my god, it was just <laughs> ridiculous. And I keep dialing it back and dialing it back every time I do it. Yeah. And even now, I think I think I could knock it back ten times and would still be there. So, so get something. Yeah. And you mentioned. Uh, it had a, something to do with age as well. So yes. this is the taste that beer can have if it's aged for quite a long time, potentially. Yeah, and, and kept in not so good, um, you know, storage conditions or mm. anything like that. So, um, you know, it's, um, it, it's, it's, it doesn't, as you can see, it doesn't take a lot of that chemical compound to be produced for, you, for it to have a noticeable effect no. on the outcome of the beer itself. So... Um, so, yeah, hot side aeration is one of those things that brewers do have to be mindful of. If you're one of those lucky brewers where your beer sells really quickly, then you kind of it's kind of one of those risk things. Yeah. That you sort of weigh up, you know, as a brewer, you go, well, this beer is going to be sold in 
30 to 60 days. So that chemical compound is not going to appear. So I don't have to worry about it too much. But if you're making product, let's say that's going into Dan Murphy's that might be, um, you know, stored warm and might be on the shelf for a while mm. and that sort of thing, then that's something that might well happen. Okay. Yes. That's also, as Hannah was saying before, the four times, age is four times as quick. Yes. Cold, when you say cold, refrigeration temperature to ambient, about right. 20. Yeah. Yep. So that that compound will actually come out a lot quicker, like if it's sitting on a shelf at Dan Murphy's, than it would if it was in the fridge. That's right. Yep. So it's, yeah. Do, it's, um, if it's in there, then the storage is also going to play a big part. Do particular styles take that on more than others? Uh, absolutely. That's a really good question, Duncan. Yeah, right. Um, so lager styles will take on um, that that sort of that trans two known and all papery um, flavour mm-hmm. because in those styles there's not really any other flavours to sort of hide behind. Um, the body of those beers is quite a lot less, so there's a lot less residual sugar in them. Mm-hmm. Um, so that, so yes, it's they're laid, all those compounds are laid bare for um, for that. It's, a, it's and another point is you know there's there's other chemical compounds that don't really show up in certain styles, but are more noticeable in others. You know, um, you wouldn't really notice trans two nonal in a big say double IPA or an imperial stout or something like that. Um, because there's so many other things going on. Your brain can't pick up everything all at once, right? But in a nice, clean, crisp lager, it becomes very noticeable. Yeah, that was that was not hard to notice whatsoever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>